This is an MCB, or Miniature Circuit Breaker, and as its name implies, it will break the electrical circuit under certain conditions. But what are those conditions? What use we give to this device in our everyday lives, and how this component work? We will see that in this video. But now this is an RCCB, or Residual Current Circuit Breaker, and here in Spain we call this a Differential Interrupter. This is another electrical safety breaker that might save our lives in certain conditions. We will also see how this device works and how it can protect us and prevent serious harm from electrical shocks. So guys, in this video, we will see the circuit breaker in action, talk about the MCB, the RCCB or sometimes called RCD, the GFCI or GFI, which are basically the same, and see all kind of examples, in order to understand how these devices work the differences between each one, how these devices are connected, and what safety features each one has. So guys, make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. And if you think my work is helping you, consider supporting my videos on Patreon, link for that is below. So guys, let's get started. This episode is sponsored by LCSC, a low-cost electronic components distributor with more than 200,000 components of all kind. Passive components of all sizes, through hole and SMD, different kind of microcontrollers, power management and regulators, amplifiers, drivers and much more. The prices are very low and if you buy more, the price will get even lower. Each component has its part number and datasheet, so it's very easy to find and they are connected directly with Easy EDA PCB Designer, so you can order the components from your PCB design and be sure that they will be compatible. They have a global shipping service for more than 200 countries, so if you need low-cost parts for your projects, go to LCSC, place the order and receive the components very fast. What's up my friends, welcome back! So here we have the MCB, which stands for Miniature Circuit Breaker, and it could be of one pole, two poles or more. The main purpose of this device is to break the circuit in these two cases. First, when we have an overload connected during a certain amount of time. And second, when we have directly a short circuit. This is a thermal magnetic breaker and that's because it combines both the magnetic breaker and the thermal metal dilatation breaker. So how does it do that? Well, for that we need to open this one and see what we have inside. So stay tuned for that. But first, what is an overload? Well, to protect our homes, each room or small sector is limited to a certain power. Let's say 2000 watts. You will see the electric panel with different breakers for different rooms or sectors of your home. Usually kitchens with electric heaters, boilers, ovens and so on would be rated to a higher power or have a separated breaker just for that high power heater. If that power limit is overpassed for a long time, let's say instead of 2000 watts we connect a 3000 watts device, the cables could get quite hot because they are not suited for that power. That power could even get to melt the wires or create a fire inside of our walls. And of course we don't want that. To prevent that we use the thermal breaker capabilities of this device. So first we do a test for that and then we open the MCB and see how it works inside. This model is a B13, and that means it's rated for 13 amps for a period of approximately 1 hour. 13 amps at 230 volts, that should be a power of 3000 watts or so. To simulate an overload, I will connect a hair dryer of 2100 watts, a toaster of 1400 watts, and an electric heater of 2000 watts, so a total of 5500 watts, so that should be enough to trigger the thermal breaker. Now I can do this in my workshop, because the breaker from my home electrical panel is rated to 10 amps, which is lower than the one that we are testing. So for sure my home breaker will jump before this one. But for that I go to my living room, because here I have a breaker rated to 16 amps and the one that we are testing is 13 amps, so this should jump first. All these appliances are now connected to this triple plug and then in series with the breaker as you can see. I plug in the circuit and then I enable the breaker. And yes, after a short while, around 1 minute or so, the breaker jumps. 
Let's see this one more time. Okay, so by that it opens the circuit and we save the wiring from a fire or melted wires. But now let's open the MCB. So power is connected in series to this device from here to here. So the same amount of current passing through the load will pass through the breaker as well. When the switch is up, the circuit is closed, so current is flowing. When the switch jumps, it opens the circuit, but let's see how. I have to use my drill press and remove the metal rivet, because these devices usually don't work with screws, so we have to totally remove the metal rivet. Ok, so now we can open the enclosure. So let's see what we have. So first we have these two components, which are the input and the output contacts, and here we have to connect our wires. Then we have the plastic lever, that we use to open and close the switch. In the middle we have the so-called arc driver, which prevents plasma arcs to form when the switch jumps. Above the plastic switch we have the actuator, which is the part that moves. This component will make the contact with the terminals or break the circuit when needed. And finally, the most important parts are the thermal metal strip, which is this one here, and the magnetic coil, which is this one here. Let's first see how the thermal breaker works and then the magnetic part. Ok, so when I push the switch up, it will enable the current flow because the actuator will touch the copper connector below. Well, right now it's not touching the terminal because we don't have the top plastic part to keep the actuator straight. But if I keep the actuator in place as you can see, it will touch the copper terminal below and close the circuit. The important part is this small metal lever and this metal strip. When we have too much current passing through this metal strip, it will heat up. Its dimensions are well calculated, so it will start heating up after a certain amount of current flow. When a metal heats up, it will change its shape due to metal dilatation. A very small shape change is enough to push this small lever up, and look what happens when I pull the lever up. Yes, the entire actuator will just jump and open the circuit. That's because this lever is connected to this plastic part of the actuator. And when we pull it up, it releases the tension, and since we have a spring below, it will pull the actuator away. So that's how the thermal protection works. We have too much current, the metal strip will heat up and change its shape, that will give a push to the lever up, and by that releasing the actuator and interrupting the circuit. But now how does the magnetic part of this breaker works? Well first of all this protection is for short circuits. Since we have a B13, the B will mark that it's rated to 3 to 5 times the 13 amps when a short circuit occurs. And as you all know, when we have a short circuit, a huge amount of current will pass instantly, because the resistance is practically zero. Now the current path is through this coil here. So the huge amount of current will create a strong magnetic field that will push this piston up, instantly. That once again will release the actuator and interrupt the circuit. So that's how the magnetic part of this breaker works, and protect the wires from short circuits. The thermal protection changes the metal shape and remove the lever, and the magnetic protection creates a magnetic field and pushes a metal piston. That's why this device is a thermal magnetic breaker, because it has both protections in the same device. Ok guys, but this MCB won't protect us, only the wiring. I mean, if I touch a live wire and shock myself, the MCB won't do nothing because the current is not high enough and we don't have a short circuit neither. That's why we have the RCCB or Residual Current Circuit Breaker. This device is made to protect our lives, not only the wiring. So let's see how this device works. For that we need to understand how the electrical wiring is done here in Europe and I think it's kind of the same in United States or other continents, but anyway. At the main input of our home we have 5 or 3 wires with these names and usually the colors of the wires are these ones. We have the neutral, the live wire 1, 2 and 3 and the PE, which is ground. Now I live in Spain and in my home we have just 3 wires, live, neutral and ground, since I have no high power appliances. Now imagine that you connect an appliance between the live wire and neutral, so 230 volts will be connected to the load, and a certain amount of current will flow from L1 to neutral. But imagine that this device that you are powering has an exposed wire, and you touch that. You will definitely get an electrical shock, and this is very dangerous. 
but now between our device and the main input we place the RCCB. If we open this RCCB, which in this case is for 3 live wires, we will see some kind of transformer and some winding around it. And then we have some connectors for each of the live wires and neutral. But the magic is done by the small transformer, and this is how. So here we have the main input, the RCCB transformer and the load that we have connected. Now current is flowing from the L1 through one side of the transformer and then it passes the load. That same current value is now flowing back to neutral and at the same time is passing back through the other side of the transformer. We know that this current will create magnetic fields inside of the core of the transformer. But since we have the same amount of current that is going through the transformer in this way and in this way, the magnetic fields are opposed and in equal value. So that means that the field is in equilibrium and the magnetic inductions will cancel each other's out. But now let's say that I touch the exposed wire. In this exact moment, one part of the current will still be going to neutral as before. But now a small part of the current is also going through me to ground. So as you can see, the input current to the RCCB transformer is not equal to the output current anymore. So the magnetic inductions inside of the core won't cancel each other's out. We can easily detect these magnetic induction changes and when that occurs, we trigger the circuit breaker and interrupt the current flow from the live wires and neutral. So each time we have a current leak that is not getting back to neutral, the RCCB will jump and save our lives. That's why this is called a residual current breaker, because we have a residual current flowing in the wrong way. RCCB is the name that we use in Europe, but in United States this device is called GFCI or ground fault circuit interrupter, and it's kind of the same. All we have to do is to detect a small current difference between the input and the output, and when that occurs, it means that the current is going in the wrong place. It can be that I'm touching the live wire, maybe the device that I'm using has an internal short circuit between the live wire and ground, or maybe the wiring inside of my walls are getting wet, in the bathroom for example, and the small current is flowing towards ground. In all these cases, the RCCB will save our lives. The RCCB has a test button. Internally, this is connected to a small resistor and when you push it, it will create a short circuit between the live and neutral through this resistor and by that we simulate the residual current. We should monthly test this in order to see if the mechanism still works. The rest of the components are just the terminals for the neutral and live wires 1, 2 and 3. The magnetic field from the transformer induces a small current that is rectified with the small rectifier and inside this white case we have another coil as a relay. This coil will push this red piston and that will trigger the switch and interrupt the circuit. When the RCCB jumps, all connectors will separate from the terminals as you can see, and the circuit is now open and we are protected. So guys, that's how the main electrical protection MCB and RCCB works. I hope that you understand the principle of each one of these. Depending on your country, the values, the internal structure or the names might be different. If you like this video and learned something new, give it a like. Consider subscribing and activate the notification bell. If you think my work is helping you, consider supporting my videos on Patreon. So thanks again and see you later guys.